Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. As well as Docking Bay 94, located in Boca Raton, Florida. And Ian's Display Stands. Please look at the link below and click on our sponsors. Thank you. This issue touches close to me as it dives into how PTSD can grow and evolve into doing something terrible. While veterans will come to mind when PTSD and suicide are together, sadly other forms of abuse, victims of hate, discrimination, and bullying are all included. If you fall into any of these, get help. There is goodness in the world. I should know because I suffer from PTSD, and I was a victim of hate. Getting into G.I. Joe collecting, volunteering at a disability center, a homeless center, and animal shelters help me. There are people that, are, that care, and I'm happy that Hasbro and IDW are joining forces to bring awareness to this. Now let's begin. Now, this is kind of like a flashback standalone issue. Paul Lord, the writer, did the unthinkable by killing off Duke in the very first issue of this series. And as I've said many times recently, this series has been the biggest, I mean, unbelievably biggest pleasant surprise so far. As with every episode, we look at the cover and the cover variants. And, you know... I, maybe they timed it perfectly with everybody looking for the Baroness and Target. There are two Baroness covers. Now again, as a reminder, we have all the famous names in G.I. Joe, but in this series, it's completely different from a real American hero. Here we have Scarlet, and this Shauna O'Hara has a completely different backstory than the Kung Fu prodigy from Atlanta. So it's like discovering who she is for the first time. And we see her taking something as simple as throwing out the trash and what happens when you have PTSD and the triggers that it brings upon. She's just, you know, going through her motion, but her mind is somewhere else. Here we have Duke dropping in to check up on Scarlet, knowing that she's having some trouble adjusting back to civilian life. Now, like the American... A real American hero, the timestamp is switched from Vietnam to the Gulf War. But unlike a real American hero, Duke and Scarlet had worked together during that operation, where in a real American hero, did, they did not until they joined the G.I. Joe team. So we see here Scarlet discussing how, you know, she's a soldier and she can't get that soldier that's in her out, which a lot of people, you know, from experience, that's the tough thing. Like, you know, you knew the life before and the life that you lived. And then going back to that life is the biggest jump. So Duke tells her, you know, go to therapy, get some help. And she's reluctant at first, but then, you know, she has to go because that's what Duke said. Hey, you have to do this. Otherwise, I won't let you in on something that I'm working on. So it's kind of like, you know, holding the cookie above her to make her do this. For her own improvement. So Scarlett begins attending group therapy and again the issue that she and other vets struggle with is not just a simple letting go. It's learning to accept the past, cope, and move forward. So she reluctantly begins. Kenneth, the bearded vet we see here, is going to play an important part during this remainder of this issue. Now, he talks about the variety of sodas and how that's a problem. Well, to civilians, it may sound like it's a non-issue, but Kenneth shares a common problem, especially with battle-hardened veterans, and that's the guilt. Why are they back? Why do they have this chance to enjoy all this soda when they saw buddies killed? A few days later, Scarlett stands in front of the sodas when another episode un unravels. As part of her therapy, she's instructed to retell all of her battle stories, lay all out, and then listen to them again. 
she talks, has a meeting with the doctor in charge, and she's saying that I'm not having this breakthrough that Kenneth had. Like, I'm still trying to get above that. And he says it to her, don't expect a cure-all. It's going to be in phases. So then she has a meeting with Duke about a couple months later, and Duke is, is, wants to know how is her therapy going along, and she expresses her frustration. And, you know, the meeting ends with him telling her, you really need to apply yourself to this. And in the next meeting, we see her and Kenneth having a conversation over coffee. He tells Scarlett, hey, you know what? I actually tried that soda, and it was good, and I didn't feel guilty. Kenneth adds, you know, we are alive, so let's give living a chance instead of clinging on to a soldier's life. You know, Scarlett initially is like, oh, you gave up so easy. It's not that it's, it's not that easy. But then she s- contemplates this and we see her going back to the grocery store and picking up the soda. And she actually tries the soda and she's so excited to her. This is a big breakthrough. When she goes to the next meeting, she notices Kenneth is not there. Sadly, everyone tells her that Kenneth has committed suicide. He had an episode and he just couldn't spin out. He couldn't get out of it. And you see how dejected and broken this has made the group, especially Scarlett. I mean, she just accomplished a major milestone. And we see her attending uh, Kenneth's funeral with everybody else. And she sits there looking at the casket. And she's like, is there any hope for me? Another episode follows and she unfortunately gets drunk and oblivious to what's going on around them how Cobra is taking over the world and launching its offensive. At the same time, she's trying to reach Duke, but he, I mean, uh, yeah, Duke, but he's not picking up, so she's worried about Duke as well. She visits Kenneth's grave and has a conversation with him. She tells him, hey, you abandoned me. You, How could you just give up and do this so easily? When suddenly Duke's call comes through and Duke is telling her what's going on with Cobra. And she's like, please put me back in, I could help. But he says, no, you need to win this battle first until you have, can do anything close to helping us out. Meanwhile, we see yeah, Cobra is beginning their assault on conquering the world. So far, they have total control of the West Coast. And there's, um, kind of, it's like guerrilla warfare. Like Cobra is going in and just taking over spots uh, uncontested or contested in, like, in small bands. Pretty soon... Cobra has entirely conquered the United States. And we see her again. She goes through another episode, and like we've seen before, just throwing out the trash. But this time, the trigger comes, and she's able to laugh at it. And this is like a huge breakthrough. She's like, okay. And Duke suddenly shows up, I'm like, hey, did I miss something? And he's like, no, 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 I had an episode, but I kind of learned how to roll with it. So... You know, her and Duke go back to her place to talk more. And she tells her, like, what she's learned. Basically, what I've been saying is not trying to uh, wipe it out of your mind. You are going to have that. You just have to learn to deal with it better and move forward for yourself, not for anybody else. And Duke's like, yeah, you're ready now to help me out. So this is the start of G.I. Joe in this world. Anyway... This is a great issue. It was emotionally tough for me, and I know a lot of people this will be tough for. And yes, we're going to see Snake Eyes appearing in next issue, hopefully. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next comic recap. This is Shabu Are You, signing off.